Ubisoft gaming executive says that he doesn't want you to own your games. He's saying that direct to subscriptions is saying that gamers need to start feeling comfortable with not owning the games they're playing. Now, I'm firmly against this, but let's see what he has to say. Just like with music and television, the games industry has been slowly shifting towards the all digital future for some time now, despite pushback from certain communities with concerns surrounding preservation and ownership. I'm one of those people. Unfortunately, it seems like the biggest publishers out there aren't concerned about the latter, as a Ubisoft executive recently stated that gamers need to get used to the feeling of not owning their games. The statement was made by Ubisoft's director of subscriptions, Philippe Tremblay, who recently spoke to GameIndustry.biz about their digital future and Ubisoft Plus specifically. Tremblay states that people eventually got comfortable with not owning their CD DVD collections and that a similar shift in attitude needs to happen in gamers. One of the things we saw is that gamers are used to a little bit like DVD having and owning their games. That's the consumer shift that needs to happen. He doesn't want people to own games. The issue that I have with this, let me just be on my little soapbox for a little bit for you guys, is that when they do this, uh, I'm pretty sure, I'm not sure if Uplay has done this, but I know that there are other ones that have done this. A game no longer is popular, a game no longer is being played by anybody, they take off the servers, and the game becomes unplayable, pretty much. Like, I think uh, there's some that developers pull games from Steam, developers pull games from that, they're like, ah, you know, this game isn't making us any money, why are we going to keep it on Steam and keep the servers up and all this other stuff? So they pull it, just like they do with other media, like Amazon's been doing with, with uh, Discovery Channel stuff, they pull. You've paid the subscription to have this, and in many cases, you've paid the money 60 bucks to have your game. But they reserve the right to pull it at any point in time. They're saying that they're not going to do it now, but what about 10 years in the future when that game is not useful to them anymore? You think they're going to keep that on Uplay with limited server space and limited server availability and all the server costs and everything like that? You think they're going to keep your 10-year-old game there? There's people like me that play Railroad Tycoon, that play uh, Zoo Tycoon, that play all these games that you had physical media of, that I have the CDs for, StarCraft, things like that, that may disappear, but I still can play them because I have a physical copy of it. That's why physical media is absolutely necessary here. Now, he goes on to say, um, it's Tremblay's view on physical games is not, isn't that shocking considering he's the director of subscriptions. You know, he's trying to get money through subscriptions. But he does leave out some concerns shared by many when it comes to subscription services. For starters, games actually do come and go as they serve on these services right now. With the most recent example being Grand Theft Auto V leaving Xbox Game Pass. Yes, and then you can't play it anymore. If you're a subscriber, if you play, they can do that at any time, just like I said before. If you play games only via subscription services, you can very easily lose access to certain titles on a regular basis. Now, I believe on Steam... If you have your game and you have you you have your CD key and all that kind of stuff, I think you can technically upload it to be played offline. I believe so, and still use the Steam service. I believe so. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that, but I believe that is the case. Correct me if I'm wrong in the in the description in the comments, as you guys usually do. I want you to hold my hand, hand to the fire, my hands to the fire, my feet to the fire, and correct me if I'm wrong. Secondly, games that are pulled from online stores for one reason or another would mean they would cease to exist in all digital future. So that's the thing. If we don't have physical media, they would disappear. They'd be gone. That game you loved, that awesome game that you played, that was only digital, gone. Because the publisher, Ubisoft or anybody else, decides, eh, we don't need this anymore. Gone. Forever. No game preservation. I don't like that. Two high-profile examples that are shown here are Alan Wake and Ubisoft's very own The Crew, both of which were pulled due to licensing issues. While the former eventually returned to digital storefronts thanks to recent remaster, the crew can no longer be bought and will be poof out of existence March 31st, 2024. Now with card games, the specific issue that they have there is that card games, they get uh, licensing from the manufacturers. Like for example, Subaru, Toyota, etc. gives them a license, like they pay for a license to use the Supra, the WRX, the, the STI, Outback, etc., in their game, whichever freaking one that they want to use, they can use it in their game as long as the license goes. And the license can go for 10 years, it can go for two years, it can go for one year. Uh, they aren't the only ones that suffer this. Forza Motorsport suffers this a lot, too. That's why it's usually like a yearly release or semi yearly release. And then when it's done, it's done, it's gone. That's one thing I don't like. And that's one thing that's being pushed big time. And of course, uh, the last part it, they're saying, despite these worries, it seems inevitable that publishers will try and push more and more for players towards prescription services for the foreseeable future. 
they've seen how much money that they bring for streaming giants like Netflix, Disney, and want a slice of the action. Also, Game Pass brings a lot of money too. With description revenue making up 89% of the video-based content market in the UK last year. So that's what they're doing. They, they, they see the money. They see the dollar signs. They're like, this can help us. And gamers aren't going to fight back. So it's going to happen. Of course, it's no surprise to the people who know how corpos are. It's no surprise to the people who know exactly the way that these corporations run things. They're in it for the money. They're in it for the profit, which as a publicly traded company, they legally have to be in it for the profit, but they don't have to be so sinister and evil about it. That's my take on it. Of course, you can correct me down in the comments down below. I love having that commentary with, from you guys. I love having that conversation with you guys. There's also my social media down in the description down below, as well as anything that pops up on your screen right now as YouTube does recommend videos. You can see any one of those on the screen. Thank you so much. This is the Matt Salvi saying I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.